how will a temporary pause in the fighting affect the IDF's operations in Gaza? Joining me now, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner is the IDF spokesperson. Thank you very much uh, for being with us, uh, Peter. So, um, first of all, what will Hamas be able to do with a multi-day pause in the fighting? So I know what we'll be able to do, Laura. We'll be able to regroup and prepare ourselves for the next stages. Uh, the government has been very clear. The, the war is not ending. This is a hiatus in order to bring home hostages. Uh, this is one of the war goals. This is one of our goals in order to uh, bring the people home, 236 Israelis and foreign nationals being held unlawfully by Hamas. So our goal in this pause, in this operational pause, will be to allow them to come home. We need to be prepared, and indeed, we've learned our lessons from the past, how Hamas uh, can't really be trusted. And so we need to be prepared. We need to be strong in our defensive positions, and we need to be prepared for any eventuality that Hamas um, may try and take advantage of a pause. And can you confirm that the truce will begin at 10 a.m. on Thursday? So I think you know, there are, now there's a legal process that will dictate timing. Uh, when we receive the instructions, whether it's 10 or earlier or later, that is when we will be imp implementing it, not a moment before. Uh, the reality is, of course, on the battlefield is also dynamic because as we speak, Laura, the battles and the, the, the war fighting is continuing and we are continuing to hunt down and, and kill Hamas terrorists wherever we see them. You know, they are still operating from within their t tunnels and, and within their, wherever they are launching their attacks from. And so we are continuing our, our offensive against them in order to destroy and uh, decapitate their capabilities and make sure that they can never attack us again. So until this, um, the pause is implemented, we are continuing our war effort. And are you confident that the IDF will be able to recover the momentum necessary to finish off Hamas? Is there a risk that there might be some pressure uh, on Israel to, to hold back from finishing the job? Uh, we receive our instructions from the government. And uh, if the government has told us to move forward, we'll continue to move forward. The momentum is dictated not only by the uh, actions on the ground, but also the implementation of a strategic plan, of a step-by-step -step plan, a strike-by-strike -strike plan. We know how to do this, and we can hold defensive positions if that brings home hostages. I think that is what is uh, uh, most important at this stage, is that we can bring home as many people as possible. And this is what the framework is supposed to give us, that window to bring you know, women and children home. That's what's important at this stage. Can you tell us a bit about uh, the IDF's achievements so far then? Um, we hear today that 400 uh, tunnel shafts have been destroyed. So essentially that means that any terrorists in those tunnels will not be able to get out. Are we... Seem to have lost Peter Lerner there, a bit of a sound problem. Uh, so we have got this report for you. We lost you. Oh, no, he's back with us. Peter, apologies for that. We lost you for okay. a second. Can you tell us a bit more? Can you hear me, Peter? Peter, can you hear me? All right, we've got some, uh, we've got a bit of a technical problem there. Let's uh, bring you this report then, Ariel levy wildman on what the IDF has achieved in Northern Gaza so far. All right, Peter, are you back with us? Yes, I am. Sorry for that. Apologies. We're having a few technical problems. Not sure uh, if it's our end or your end, Peter. I was just asking you about the uh, IDF's achievements so far in northern Gaza, especially uh, with regard to the tunnel networks. So tunnel network is a huge challenge, and indeed... Uh, we announced this morning of 400 tunnel access points that we've destroyed throughout the last six weeks. It is, uh, you know, they have hundreds of uh, kilometers of tunnels that they've built, I would say at the expense of the people of Gaza. And it is part of their modus operandi to exploit the civilian arena in, in, and uh, hospitals extensively uh, and also uh, mosques and UN facilities. And this is where these tunnels are running 
from place to place, from location to location. And we are in the course of dismantling, destroying, and um, making sure that these, these tunnels are do not give Hamas any sort of advantage on the battleground, but rather pose a as a potential death trap for them. Um, and that is why you see this imagery of us dismantling and destroying their capabilities, their subterranean capabilities, um, taking away that what they thought was to be an advantage, um, I would say access point to access point or peer by peer.